what the hell are you thinking about? It's weird. And what's happened, of course, is that we're standing a bit for some combination of basic morality and sturdy common sense. And it's amazing how well Berkshire Hathaway and the Daily Journal, for that matter, have succeeded with nothing more than basic morality and sturdy common sense. But of course, when people talk about common sense, they mean uncommon sense. Every time you hear that somebody has a lot of common sense, it means he's got uncommon sense. And it is much harder to have common sense than is generally thought. Let me give you an interesting example. In the investment world, people, it involves an enormous amount of high IQ people trying to be more skillful than normal. You can hardly imagine another activity that gets so much attention. And weird things have happened. And years ago, one of our local investment counseling shops, a very big one, they were looking for a way to get an advantage over other investment counseling shops. And they reasoned as follows. We've got all these brilliant young people from Horton and Harvard and so forth, and they work so hard trying to understand business and market trends and everything else. And if we just ask each one of our most brilliant men for their single best idea, then created a formula with this collection of best ideas, we would outperform averages by a big amount. And that seemed plausible to them because they were ill-educated. That's what happens when you go to Harvard and Wharton. And so they tried it out, and of course it failed utterly. So they tried it again, and it failed utterly, and they tried it a third time and it also failed. And of course what they were looking for is the equivalent of the alchemists of centuries ago who wanted to turn lead into gold. They thought if you could just buy a lot of lead and wait or magic wand over to turn it into gold, that would be a good way to make money. This counseling shop was looking for the equivalent of turning lead into gold. And of course it didn't work. I could have told them, but they didn't ask me. Now, the, the interesting thing about this situation is that this is a very intelligent group of people that's come from all over the world. You've even got a lot of bright people from China where people tend to average out a little smarter. And the issue is very simple. It's a simple question. Why did that plausible idea fail? Just think about it for a minute. You've all been to fancy educational institutions. I bet you there's hardly one in the audience who knows why that thing failed. That's a pretty ridiculous demonstration I'm making. How can you not know that? It's one of the main activity of America. It's an obvious, important failure. Surely we can explain it. You have to have stayed awake in your freshman college courses to answer that question. But if you ask that question at a department of finance, at a leading place, the professors wouldn't answer it right. Now I'm gonna leave you that question because I want you perplexed. <laughs> But that's one you should be able to answer. It shows how hard it is to be rational on something very simple. How hard it is, how many kind of crazy ideas people have and they don't work. You don't even know why they don't work, even though it's perfectly obvious that you've been properly educated. And by the way, my definition of being properly educated is being right when the professor is wrong. Anybody can spit back what the professor tells you. The trick is to know when he's right and when he's wrong. That's the properly educated person. And of course, they're frequently wrong, particularly in the soft sciences. In fact, if you look at a modern elite institution, it's fair to say that a lot of the faculty are a little crazy. It's so left wing now in the humanities and it's very peculiar. And that's another thing. Why should 90% of the college professors in the humanities be very left wing? I leave that question for you too. <laughs> but it happens. Now, the place like Berkshire Hathaway or even the Daily Journal, we've done better than average. And now there's a question, why has that happened? And the answer is pretty simple. We tried to do less. We never had the illusion we could just hire a bunch of bright young people and they would know more than anybody about canned soup and aerospace and utilities and so on and so on and so on. We never had that dream. We never thought we could get really useful information on all subjects, like Jen Kramer pretends to have. <laughs> and we always realized that if we worked very hard, we could find a few things where we were right. 
and that a few things were enough and that that was a reasonable expectation. That is a very different way to approach the process. And if you had asked Warren Buffett the same thing that this investment counseling did, give me your best idea this year, and you just followed Warren's best idea, you would find it worked beautifully. But he would try to know the whole, he would give you one or two stocks. He had more limited ambitions. I had a grandfather who was very useful to me my mother's grandfather, and he was a pioneer, and he came out to Iowa with no money but youth and health, and took it away from the Indians. He fought in the Black Hawk, he was a captain in the Black Hawk Wars, and he stayed there, and he bought cheap land, and he, he was aggressive and intelligent and so forth, and eventually he was the richest man in the town and on the bank, and highly regarded in a huge family and a very happy life. He had the attitude, having come out to Iowa when the land was not much more than a dollar an acre, and having stayed there until that black topsoil created a modern, rich civilization and some of the best land in the world. His attitude was that in a favored life like his, when you were located in the right place, you just got a few opportunities if you lived to be about 90. And the, the trick in coming out well was seizing a few opportunities that were your fair share that came along when they did. And he told that story over and over again to the grandchildren who hung around him all summer. And my mother, who had no interest in money, remembered the story and told it to me. But I'm not my mother's natural imitator. And I knew Grandpa Ingham was right. And so I always knew from the very first, when I was a little boy, that the opportunities that were important that were gonna come to me were few and that the trick was to prepare myself for seizing the few that came. This is not the attitude they have at a big investment counseling thing. They think if they study a million things, they can know a million things. And of course, the result is almost nobody can outperform an index. Whereas I sit here with my Daily Journal stock, my Berkshire Hathaway stock, my holdings at Lilu's Asian fund, my Costco stock, and of course, I'm outperforming everybody. And I'm 95 <laughs> years old, and I practically never have a transaction. And the answer is I'm right and they're wrong. And that's why it's worked for me and not for them. And you know, the question is, do you want to be more like me or more like them? <laughs> the idea of diversification makes sense to a point. If you don't know what you're doing and you want the standard result and not be embarrassed, well, of course, you can widely diversify. 